So let's just get started um, with this. So yeah, thanks for joining. This is really a um, casual uh, um, internal webinar for everybody in Arctos. So we kind of all start with the, on the same page with Git and GitHub. And then, you know, like I said, we can add on if there's more uh, interest. So I just thought I'd start with Git. I mean, I, how many people even know what that is or just generally when we're talking about Git? Um, so Git is basically, I think he, the guy who started Linux actually also invented this particular kind of subversioning uh, called Git. And it's supposed to be like super simple, which is why I think it's called Git. At least that's the way it was described to me. And so basically what it does is just, um, keeps track of uh, different versions of code of, of a, uh, it's, it's designed for code, but basically it'll keep different versions, keep track of different versions of any file. So it could actually be, yeah, pretty much anything it could be a word doc even. So that's why, why I think um, GitHub has become really popular. So GitHub is just simply this, um, it's a, it is a commercial site, but um, it just, puts this tracking system um, into a web browser that's just super easy to use. And so now people use it for project management and for tracking versions of, like I said, anything, things that, you know, are really just dynamic in nature. So, um, but there's other, you know, um, websites that are also, um, that also use Git. So if you run across, like, I think, uh, is it Git Bucket or something? I don't know. There's a, there's a more than one out there, but obviously we like GitHub because A, they give us a really generous sort of academic um, version. Um, so they've been like right there for, um, for educational institutions. So that's basically why Arctos is using it. Plus, when we were in Google Code, they actually had a um, a set of software for transitioning our stuff uh, that for the Arctos Google Code to GitHub. Not that it was like you know smooth sailing the whole time, but um, we were able to do like I would say, what would you say, Dusty, eighty five percent? Yeah, at least. Um, yeah, those yeah those tools, and then the rest we were it was just you know it was me and Dusty kind of fumbling around and downloading things and uploading things and anyways things things managed to get pushed over though so now we're in github so that's why we're using this for issue tracking and we'll explain um, um, the benefits for using that and you may want to explore github just you know um, on your own and you know use it for you know posting your personal website, for instance, or another project website. So we, I realize that most of the Arctos users may not be familiar with um, GitHub um, as a separate um, code site, but there's a lot of good bells and whistles. So let me switch over to uh, Arctos here and on GitHub. So we have an organizational account called Arctos DB. And um, before you can really get started and do anything, you have to start uh, create your own account. So I'm going to let Teresa kind of walk us through that, those steps. Um, so would you like to do that? Sure. Okay, um, great. I don't, I don't know if we need to show the screenshots or anything. Um, I put the link yeah. um, on the Google Doc to the how-to um, that I spent a little time the last couple of days sort of massaging and hopefully making better. Um, but it gives you instructions on creating a GitHub account, which actually those instructions are on GitHub. But once you have your account in um, adding to your profile a little bit so that other users within Arctos can know who you are um, and just to help yeah. you communicate with the rest of the community. So, yeah, and it's really helpful because, you know, so I'm just showing uh, a little bit of the how to, so you, you, you'll recognize it when you get to it. But yeah, like you'll see when we, we're just going to do a lot of, you know, um, 
demos here too. When we get to the, this is all the people in our, uh, associated with our Arctos uh, organization. And so it, it can be really challenging to figure out like who this person is. <laughs> um, and this person, I know who he is, even though he's got, you know, like a cow and his, actually his username is not too hard to figure out, but you know, sometimes it's a challenge. Like you, your username does not have to be your name, obviously. Um, so yeah, it's really helpful if we have, um, at minimally at least your um, full name associated with your user account. Um, I mean, maybe I, we won't get too worried about Derek Sykes because that's pretty obvious, but, um, but it also helps if we also had a link to, let's say your um, institution. So like on mine, I think I've got, uh, here I should use a profile here. You can see there's like a link to my institution. So that's that's a little bit helpful so we can figure out who people are um, okay let's go back to arctos here yeah is there um specific things that you know we should be um adding to our profile though yeah so i the two things you covered are your name and your institution those two things are very helpful um but it, if you want to put your picture or at least some kind of avatar that makes you recognizable when you post, that's helpful. Um, and any other information that's on there, you can feel free to enter because the more the better, that helps other people find you. Um, the other thing is you might find as you continue to work with Arctos that you end up becoming members of other GitHub communities. So for instance, I um, am part of Tadwig and they have a GitHub. So I participate in some of their conversations and same with VertNet. So if you're publishing your data to GBIF or iDigBio, you're probably going through VertNet and you want to participate in their GitHub so that you can get your VertNet reports every month. So. Think about all that when you're completing your profile that you might be using GitHub for more than just Arctos. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and so, and you, it looks like you've covered all of those steps here in the how-to document too. Yeah, I think hopefully they're pretty clear. I would love it if any of you um, would go through this and actually follow through and see if there's something that seems unclear. Um, to please let me know so we can update that documentation and make it better. Okay. Um, let's, I, so I, I rested on this spot because the notifications, I feel it uh, was a hot topic in the issues <laughs> list like in the last month. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Um, and should I show that? Maybe I can show that on mine. Yeah. So, so okay. the, the, so one of the maybe bad things about GitHub is once you join um, one of the communities, so once you join Arctos, um, you're going to get notifications for everything and it can be super over overwhelming. You'll get a whole lot of email. Um, so one of the first things you probably want to do is manage your notifications. So you can see this page right here. There's all different kinds of options. Um, for how to manage those notifications. And there's kind of a hidden one um, there at the top too, where it says, um, which I can't read it, um, but the little blue words at the very top, Michelle, right in the writing under notifications, um, which in the thing, yeah, in this list, you kind of decide, am I watching or um, am I going to ignore everything from this repository? Um, so yeah, you can see the options there. So making a good choice there for each repository that you are a member of and then managing whether you're getting emails or you're watching via the web. Um, the combination of those two things is going to help you manage how many emails you get. And just so everyone knows, the way I manage this is I watch everything um, but I don't get any emails. I only monitor via the web, um, but that requires some discipline. It means you right. have to make yourself go to GitHub and look at your notifications, which you can so, see on, Mich 
on the top, there's a little blue bell up in that black bar. You click on that, um, it shows you all your unread notifications and then you can decide, do I wanna read this or I'm just gonna mark it, un mark it read and not look at it. Um, and that's the way I manage it so that I don't get any email at all from GitHub. So you can, you can have it all the way from I get every single thing that's posted, I get an email, to I get none at all. But um, if you want to participate in the community, you need to somehow decide how you're going to monitor the conversations just to make sure that things that show up that are important to you, you have the ability to respond and participate in. So, Teresa? Uh -huh. get, um, so do you get notifications though if you're flagged in the GitHub issue? Nope, I don't. You don't get any of those? No, um, and part of that is because mm -hmm. for all of mine, I'm only watching, so. Because um, I thought it said that for unwatched, you only get things where it will, it will say at, you know, in your user. Yeah. So if you're on. That, can, can you see my screen? screen, Carla, there's yeah. a participating. So if you're mentioned, you can get an email or you can get a special or it'll show up on the website. Oh, I see. Under notification. But again, um, to Teresa's point about being disciplined, that means that, you know, you better log in if you don't get emails. Right. right. So you, you can do that or you could just, you know, the default, I think, is just have everything on. And I, yes. you know, the way I deal with it is I get everything and then I sort through it in my email, my mm -hmm. inbox. So that's how I handle it. But if I get a mention, then actually I get a special little, it goes into a special little email spot for me and that's how I manage it. So, you know, it's like everyone has their own separate ways of dealing with the gabillion emails yeah. that you, that you get. So like, you just exactly. have to like... Yeah, decide where, where is it most convenient for you. That's all. Yeah. Teresa, yeah and you I, might, have a, I have a question. How do you get to the screen where you're, that, that is on Michelle's screen? Because I'm Oh, little... right. Sorry. Under settings. So do you see that profile? I'm signed in as myself and then I, I'm under settings. Mm -hmm. and, and that's then, in that um, how to, those screenshots are in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. That's yeah. helpful. Yeah. And then under notifications, just go to straight to that tab. Yeah, and it might be that you play around, you know, set your settings one way, see how it works for you. Um, if you don't like that, you can change it and then things will happen differently. Um, so are you, just as a kind of a workflow thing, are you checking like once a day or once a week? Or once and week? I check at least probably three times a day. Uh -huh. um, okay. But I'm involved in tons of conversations, so, you know, I, I want to make sure I don't leave anybody hanging. So it, it I mean, it's a personal preference. How much do you want to participate? Um, yeah. You know, I would say probably for anybody who really wants to participate, no less than once a week, um, because there's so many conversations happening after a week's worth of time, your unread notifications will be a huge long list. Yeah, and don't go on vacation. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> oh, this is, yeah. I've got to do something. The emails are just out of control. <laughs> the other thing that's kind of outside of GitHub is you could, in your email, set it up where anything that's coming from GitHub goes into its own folder. Um, you know, right. that's another way to help manage it. Right. Then you need to be disciplined. Right. And like I said, folder. you can, you yeah. Can, yeah, you can flag your at, you know, so and so. Um, in in uh, in your email too to go into a special like hey this is this you know yeah somebody's to talking to so. you specifically yeah, yeah. Right. and you yeah, can, no, you can yeah. sort out the top by topic which I don't think can you do that in GitHub I mean you can do it in your email look for keywords that maybe are of interest a taxonomy or something that you could sort on and create a separate filter for yeah yeah so you you can do that in yeah. GitHub. Yeah. So should we? Yeah. So let's talk about issues a little. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's, so let's. Yeah. So uh, we. That was definitely a uh, an important one. So let me get back into here. Um, and 
so issues belongs to uh, different repositories. So there'll be issues related to maybe documentation or the webinars, but our main issue list is of course in the Arctos uh, side of things. Um, and so you go into your, your tab called issues and you can see all of them, which you know is generally not how most people deal with the issues because there's so many of them. <laughs> um, so uh, um, Teresa had a really great point of, um, of trying to explain why we use GitHub issues instead of just emailing Dusty. Um, and um, A, because that would uh, drive him probably insane. Um, but B, this offers some transparency for everyone so, and some archiving, some light, you know, sort of website archiving. So every time you create an issue, think of it as, you know, um, setting up a conversation that we can archive for the future. So you can see actually we have um, luckily more closed issues than we have open issues, but that means these closed issues, you, we can still return to them and figure out like, hey, did we already have a conversation about, you know, barcodes or taxonomy or something about geographic features? And we can, you know, kind of not reinvent the wheel or not rehash, you know, sort of settled um, um, things. Or, and sometimes it's just us trying to figure it out. So, um, so that's the first thing. Um, if you create, we, we, we have, we've been trying to create some ways to make issues a little bit easier to deal with. But um, let's just go through like sort of the issue creation things and then as, and I'm sure topics will come up. Um, but we will talk more specifically about labels, projects, and milestones, which are all sort of special um, things about issues. Hey, so, Michelle. Create just, go ahead. just real quick, because Marielle asked about like searching. Can you go back and show how, like if she wanted to find all the issues related to taxonomy, how you would do that? Well, there's a couple different ways. You can just search just generally up here into filter, so it'll automatically search on all um, open issues. Um, you can also search on just closed issues if you want. If you know that's where, where you are, you could just kind of remove and it'll do it for all of them. You can also just search on uh, labels. So if you're interested in, I just want to see things that are related to, what did you say, localities or something? Or taxonomy? Yeah, anything, taxonomy. Anything, yeah. right. So you can pick like a function, um, taxonomy or any of the functions. Um, and there's, if you click on that, it'll filter through all the issues and show me now all the issues that have that particular label. So this is a really handy way of dealing with this. When we go through, for instance, our issue um, uh, meetings, I basically just filter on priority equals high and, um, and open. And so you can see now all uh, the, what the um, parameters are for the filters. And then we've got all the um, issues that have been deemed um, priority high. And then we can kind of go through here and maybe filter again and, and just be like, okay, well, let's just deal with things that are easy to do or um, have to do with transactions. And maybe we can lump some of these issues together because they're related to each other. So, um, so these are ways that you can, you know, sort of filter. Um, yeah, this is kind of a depressing list right now, but <laughs> is, there <a> specific, <laughs> is there a specific uh, label that or um, way of searching that you have been able to search effectively, Mariel? Sorry, oh, sorry, yeah. you're muted. I, I'm unmuted yeah. now. No, I think that the, I use the filters a lot. And the other useful thing is when you start, if you feel like you need to create a new issue, um, and you start typing something about taxonomy, it will pop up some suggested recent issues that you might can look at before you create a new one. Um, and I'm sure Teresa yes. is going to go through that here shortly. So that's another way to check if someone else has already posted something on a similar topic. The other thing to know is GitHub changes the URL when you're doing all this stuff so you can bookmark it. So 
you can, you know, search for whatever it is you're interested in and sort it and add labels and add filters and all that stuff and then just drag that to your bar and get back there. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. So yeah, you at once you've gotten your sort of filters down, you can just uh, create this as a bookmark. Is that the the URL is is stateful? Is that is that what you're saying? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, okay. So I just wanted to kind of go through the new issues, um, uh, just because I think this was also um, sometimes a little bit. Um, well, it's, it's a new sort of thing. Um, so we have some templates for issues and um, you can choose to use them or not choose to use them, but it, it's a handy way of just, you know, getting the information that we need. So if there's a, like a feature request, a bug report, a barcode series request, authority request, these are generally, you know, hopefully, uh, um, self-explanatory. Um, I think most of them are usually bug reports or feature requests. So I'll just open one of these up. And, um, you know, you can also look at this under preview. And um, it kind of gives you uh, some tips about what we would find useful. I guess what we don't have is maybe anything about labels, but, um, but I'll show you how uh, generally we deal with labels too. So these are now completely editable. So you can just, you know, you can read what the prompt is and then delete this and, and put in your, your, um, your input there. Um, and then you can always, like I said, kind of preview what, what's gonna actually get posted in the emails and on the issue list. Um, titles is sort of a tricky thing. Um, it's not helpful when you put in a super long title um, it's also not helpful if you put in too brief a title. I mean, it really, you know, there is a, a, a nice sort of middle ground where you can put in um, exactly what your issue is. So, it, you, you know, if this is a, a feature request, um, you can rely on the labels to indicate that, or you could just say, you know, request, colon, you know, whatever it happens to be. Um, so don't make it too long, don't make it too brief. Um, so that way, um, when somebody else is coming in and is assigning some labels or we're having a um, meeting sorting through all the priority highs, you know, we can, we can actually easily do that just based on the, on the titles too. Um, so um, at this point, once you've created your feature, you can also add labels, but if you don't, um, then probably one of us will jump in and start adding labels for you because um, that is something that I, I personally tend to do. So on, under issues, there's actually a way of looking at only unlabeled issues. And I was actually doing this a little bit uh, before this um, webinar, because if I have a little bit of time, I'll go through these and make sure that we have some labels. Um, especially since, you know, I tend to pay attention to the um, locality one. So I just want to make sure I don't miss any locality one. So, you know, you can um, actually select more than one and then, you know, label them a particular, give them a certain, the same but, label. Michelle, um, is it possible for everyone to add labels or do you only, do you have to have certain permissions to be able to add labels? There was a quick question about that earlier. Yeah, so I'm going to get that to that when we get to um, the teams, the new organization. So right now, I think all the users uh, who join the Arctis community, they, they're, they're put in a team called users. And I think by default, they're able to uh, um, create things um, and manage issues. They do not have access to push things to the code um, side of the repository. So they should be able to manage that. Now, most people don't tend to do that. So I guess there is a certain a level of like trust factor. So don't like, you know, make every one of your issues priority high or critical or something like that, unless it really is. Um, but anyway, so most, most part, that's not a, that's not a big deal. Um, but if there's something here that looks like, you know, like, you know, so these are unable to's. I mean, this to me, that should probably be, you know, this is, this is a, um, this is something that's like more of a, um, uh, a high priority because that means people can't 
can't function. So I'm just going to throw in just as an example, like, you know, so those would be things that we would add the, um, those labels because, you know, like I said, if, if, if uh, Arctos can't, if people can't use Arctos, then that to me is, that's a high priority or critical priority. Um, some of these might be just more like, hey, this sounds like a great, this feels like a great idea. I don't want to forget it. So um, those will be, you know, the, those will get like maybe like a future request or the enhancement label. And then something about that's functionality, perhaps. Um, yeah, so let's see, is that, um, that kind of covers generally the labels. So um, creating labels, I don't remember about that particular um, permission role. So I'll have to double check, but certainly anybody, uh, I think above the, um, the um, contributor level uh, should be able to create labels. So for the labels now, I've been trying to make sure that they all have some little blurb of what a uh, description. So that way um, everyone understands what that label means, except for like the function codes, uh, those seem pretty self-explanatory. Um, and yeah, we're always happy to add in labels if it's useful. Um, so um, yeah, we can, I, I'll have to double check though, but I, I, I'm a kind of, I'm, I, uh, I'm pretty sure that um, everyone who's part of this uh, Arctos users team will be able to also add labels. Um, let's see, are there other issues or questions about labels? And then I can talk about projects and models. What's that different, Michelle? So open issues and pull requests. What's a pull request and is it different from an open issue? What's yes, it is. Yeah, a pull, a pull request means I made changes to the code and I want the owner of the code to pull my uh, changes to the master, merge it with the master list. Um, so typical Arctis users will never create a pull request. Yeah. Okay. Um, but okay, because yeah. it because the numbers were like you know all the same eleven open issues and pull requests. So that seems strange. Yeah. Where where are you seeing that? The uh, screen that you were just on. Yeah, go back. Under labels. Wherever you yeah wherever you were, I think it was under labels. See, it's all the same. 47 open issues and pull requests, three open issues and pull requests, 12 open issues and pull requests. So, you see what I'm saying? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't see this column. Yeah. So, this is just telling me how many issues are, are related to that. And these pull requests is basically dusty, uh, um, just uh, fixing something and then bringing it um, back to the master code, I, I'm guessing. Um, but it doesn't actually necessarily mean that it's related to a pull request. It just basically, it's more like, they, so um, in GitHub, the idea is that each issue would be solved with a pull request oh. because you're fixing something in the code. So it, I think they just kind of combine them. I see. But you, know, yeah. but you can't click on this and then get everything that has blocked needs discussion, um, right, right. including closed issues. So yeah, those right. would be, you know, so if he, if you, if he fixed it with, or Dusty fixed it, I mean, cause you're the only one who's uh, um, messing around in the code base. Um, if you fix it with a, with some, you know, if you tagged a, a pull request to an issue, then I guess it would count against this. Yeah, I think GitHub's just summing. We don't use pull requests very much because most of our issues aren't directly related to some bit of broken code there. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's mostly uh, just tallying up the issues, but that's the reason why they kind of um, uh, push them together or, you know, have them combined. So, so don't worry about it, basically. And like I said, it's really just Thanks. dusty. He's yeah, just, I figured he's it was just a number of issues, but okay. Yeah. okay. yeah, it's really a number of issues. Yeah. Um, <coughs> Michelle? Yes. You said like before we create an issue, we should make sure we double check that there isn't like that issue's already there. Uh, yeah. If we do right. find that our issue is already there, then what should we do? Should we leave a, a new comment on it or? Well, it kind of depends. So 
you can open up. Um, so let's look at one of our closed ones. You can, you know, you can, you can close, you can open it up and see like, is it this exact same thing? And, um, if it was, um, if it was, maybe it solved it because, you know, you can see like, oh yeah, I just, you know, it, it was a sort of user error and that, and that will help you and you don't even have to create an issue. If it's the same issue and it, um, and it's the error happened again and there's no way around it, then yeah, I would say just reopen it and that's what you can do here. And, um, you know, basically, uh, we'll all be sad to see a reopened issue, but that probably will make us pay attention. Um, if, uh, if it's related, but not exactly the same, you can actually create a new issue and then use this to tag, um, use the URL, um, or actually it'll probably suggest this, uh, issue, um, because there is maybe something that's related, like, you know, not exactly the same, different conditions, you know, um, uh, maybe it's only affects one collection and not another collection, you know, I mean, it could be a whole bunch of different reasons, but anyway, so that's, that, um, but it is also useful for you just for your own troubleshooting to see if there's, if it's been dealt with, um, in the past. I would also like to say that if you find something that you're coming across that other person, another person has put, posted about, please chime in and say, I agree, or this happened to me too, or I support yeah. this, or I don't agree with this, I, this wouldn't affect me, because the more I agrees we have, then that kind of gives a, another way of assigning priority. If we have 10 people with the same problem, obviously that's a higher priority and needing to be solved than one person. So uh, you can also do, I think, likes or something, you can... Um, you know, thumbs up, um, but it's just easy to say, I agree with this, to provide some support for whoever else is posting the issue. And you can put the issue number, if you do create a new one, you can put the issue number of one you're, that's similar into your new issue as a C also. Yeah, that's right. super useful for me too. Not only yeah. in prioritizing, but just figuring out if I can talk to two people and get two perspectives. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so sometimes if you just even start typing in um, so in any of the forms, it'll start, you know, giving you related ones. So you can see like, oh, yeah, we've got a lot of taxonomy stuff. They've been closed, you know, but maybe this is a new one or maybe this is related to taxonomy changes. So um, and then you can also just refer to it by the by the issue number and GitHub will be usually smart enough to, to just add it in for you, um, in the, especially in the, in the um, main issue spot, not the title. So, um, yeah, but I can't emphasize, and I mean, I certainly pay attention when there's like a lot of um, comments and activity on an issue, like, oh yeah, this is, this is important to people. You can see actually the number of comments per issue here, um, so. So let's get out of here. Um, so let me just quickly go through. Um, oh, is there any more about labels or? Um, so yeah, I just wanted to differentiate between projects and milestones. So um, projects, this is sort of fun. Um, GitHub's been doing a lot of new things around projects. So things are kind of in, in flux and, and things that weren't true, you know, uh, a month ago is probably true now. So um, under Arctos, uh, you can also click on this projects. And this is where we've started accumulating issues um, that are similar in um, theme, topic, whatever, and um, created a way for specific, especially for specific sort of subcommittees to deal with them. And um, you can have issues that belong to more than one project. And um, you can see a whole bunch of these projects that have been created uh, lately. Um, and so let, I'll just click on the first one because I don't know what, I don't actually know what's in the Paleo collection issue, but this is sort of fun uh, to check this out. And so then you can kind of you know, see the specific issues that people are dealing with here. And, um, Proof for programmer action. That sounds exciting. And then things that get closed automatically get put into this particular 
um, column. So this is uh, sort of a project management um, um, set of tools that GitHub is now offering. It's, uh, I think technically it's like a Kanban, you know, sort of mm -hmm. columns. And then you can actually add columns that have some slight automation to it. It's not like super great. And then you can always also add um, new cards anytime. And actually adding cards is pretty easy. You just take these and just drag them over to the different columns. And probably you're gonna, you're gonna wanna drag them to the first column. And then typically it kind of like, you know, as it goes through a workflow, it gets pushed to different columns. So like this one can be pulled into this next column over here. Sorry, now I've just messed up their organization. But um, so that, that's what projects does in a you know, broad overview. Um, similar but different is something called um, milestones. So there's also projects and then uh, you can we can have different milestones right here. Um, we don't really use milestones. I think the way GitHub wants you to use milestones, to be honest, um, milestones are really sort of like things that, uh, um, things that have an end goal. So for instance, um, you know, we might have a user interface version two or uh, clean up all geography issues um, forever. Uh, that would be a milestone, <laughs> an unreachable milestone, but still a milestone. And so that could be a milestone where you assign specific issues to, and then you can kind of track um, what those look like. And so that it would look more like this. So you'd have a specific issue set here. As they get closed, you can then see, you know, sort of like amount that's being um, um, accomplished at a time. And um, you would assign the milestones the same way you would assign a label. So actually, in this case, um, one issue, one milestone. So that's kind of generally how it works. We, we also use it more like a Uber labor label. Yep. Oh, sorry. Yeah, who said that? Yeah, me. Um, can you go back to projects and show how you add an issue to a project? I'm not seeing that. Yeah, so I'm going to go into uh, the project that I uh, mess around with the most, so that way um, uh, I'll remember where things go. <laughs> so um, basically, um, I have a to-do column, uh, things that are related to WKTs, because um, eventually I'm going to get my student to help me with all of those, and then stuff that's in progress, and actually some of these have been like uh, blocked so those are issues and then we've got done and a back burner one with with nothing in it so if I want to add a card I did so did you see that sorry let me just back up here if you you have to sometimes scroll all the way to the right hand side but it's under add so add card. a card is basically like an issue. and that okay. yes that adds an issue card and so when you do that you can kind of search through and, um, you know, maybe I want all everything that has label equals, uh, um, oops, I can't spell, function, quality. Right, so these are uh, issues that already exist that you're putting into a project. Is that what you mean? Yeah. Right. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I somehow I misspelled. Okay. Yeah, I get it. So cards, so that you do it through okay. the cards. And if you want to add a column, then you do add column. And if you want to move stuff from one column to another, you just drag it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's right. That's right. So yeah. So once it's in your project, then you can drag it all over the place you want. Okay. So like for this one here, um, this could go into the to do pile. So like that. Okay. Basically. Okay. And then, right, so here's cool. another one, locality, it, you know, so yeah, it's, those, those really don't belong there, but that's okay. I mean, I guess they do. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, so does it say who, so it's, it doesn't really say like who's sort of overseeing this project, right? It's just like, I, we could do that. We could actually, add, so here's the, here's the thing. Each of these projects, are actually associated with a specific team. And I'll get to that in a second. But in terms of like who's really doing sort of general management and stuff like that, it doesn't say automatically, yeah. but we could add that to um, the description. And that just, would be you know, helpful. Have it, yeah. yeah, have that as a, um, 
as just part of our general description. So yeah, am I, this one's kind of light. It just says. <laughs> So, you know, hey, it's one of the first projects. We were, we were, uh, we were right there at the bleeding edge. So, you know, this is a little bit better. This is a better one that says issues related to the Arctis communications owned by the Arctis communications manager. So we know who's in charge of it. And, um, okay. you know, and the, here's another one, uh, you know, issues to be addressed by the code table managers and taxonomy not, committees. Not every issue is going to be put in a project, right? No. Some no. Of That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Ones that have a lot of sort of like, you know, a lot right. of a okay. theme, a theme, right? Okay. okay. I have a question. Right. Exactly. So, I, yeah. Sorry. So who said that? Go ahead. I do. Um, on my screen, I don't have add card. Is there some reason why? Above back back burner. It's probably your permissions. I'm not permitted. So maybe you're not in so that. You don't yeah. have add. Okay, yeah. I'm so that's Dan as myself. I mean, that right. that may be, and it could be that this project that could be one of the um, um, permission things that we need to tweak then. So, um, it could, so what I'm, so well, let me just get into um, teams right now, just so that way people know kind of where, uh, what I'm trying to do soon. So there was an issue um, about um, levels of permissions and organizing ourselves into different teams. And so I started implementing that. Um, and I, you know, I actually started a couple months ago, but really didn't spend a lot of serious time on this. Um, but now I have, and so I'm going to get into um, the main Arctis organizational site, and you'll see that there's this thing called teams here. And so I started organizing people by their roles in the um, community, and then also by their um, sort of committee work. And we can assign these different committees and different teams to different repositories at different levels. So um, I think I read somewhere on the GitHub uh, blog um, that um, uh, if you are in a team that has differing amounts of permissions, that it always defaults to the one that has more expansive permissions. So, um, so that's, you know, just something to know about. Um, so generally speaking, uh, we happen to have teams that aren't always associated with a repository um, because some of these are just for the community to recognize people. So for instance, Arctos code table administrators, this isn't really associated with a repository, but it lets you know who has access to um, change, um, code tables and we should probably have somebody on you know a bunch of different um, um, uh, for, at least one person from um, every institution for instance or something along those lines once they've gotten uh, gotten um, trained um, and has the proper Oracle permissions also so um, so this is a little bit of work in progress uh, let me go back to um, where we are with the with the the, the main group of Arctos users. So I just renamed this to Arctos users. This is where everybody um, is by default um, associated with the Arctos community. And um, if you click here, you can see the repositories people have access to. So they have access to the Arctos ones where our, our issues are. Um, data migration, they can read it. it. Um, they can also uh, write to our documentation. This is our handbook. So they can do our handbook. Um, and they can also read in these repositories, but they can't write to them. So, um, and I'll just give you an example of these permissions. So you can see all this stuff um, because I'm logged in as admin, but you won't be able to see this, um, I think, for everybody. Um, so you uh, this is where I need to dig into the GitHub um, 
manual, um, their help ma uh, site, and just make sure that um, people who have this level can also create labels. That's the part that wasn't clear to me. And maybe um, because, uh, sorry, I don't know who's talking um, because I don't have that open right now, but um, somebody was just asking about whether you can't see the poll um, issues on the project. It could be that we need to um, maybe um, make everyone um, have right access. So that would be right here. So, so, um, so I'm just changed that to right access. So maybe you can log back in and, or just refresh that screen and see if you have the pull issues right okay. now. I'll try that. Yeah. Oh, is that Mary Beth? Yes. I recognize your voice. Yes. Yeah, okay, I recognize your voice now. Sorry, you just, <laughs> let me, actually. So when you go back to users, it looked like there were three pending or something. Is that, what does that mean? And are you yeah, somebody, yeah. So they were invited, but they did not accept. And so I don't even, so this is where it's like, you know, I don't know who these people are. And I'm sort of, uh, yeah. I know yeah, like, Shannon, so I'm, it's from Utah. She's, she's on, the, she's on the call. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm inclined to like, you know, <laughs> if I don't recognize the name and be added in a profile, like I'm going to kick them out and they can request um, to be added in again. But, you know, this is what I'm saying. It's helpful to have some, some um, um, profile information added in there. But, you know, I, so I won't kick them out because I assume somebody else invited them and, um, and I'm not really sure why they yeah. haven't accepted. I know who the C Myers person is, but and it's probably because her student is doing all the work, so. Okay. <laughs> well, you can give them a little nudge. Yeah, yeah. Well, she also, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Okay, I mean, you know, like I said, um, since you, if you sent them an invitation, you should be able to resend it too, actually. Um, so, but I, I, you know, I'm not gonna do that. Right. A, just a. So I just leave that, but um, all the working group folks can actually extend invitations too, I believe, or working uh, officers. What did I call them? Working group officers, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then I did start, oh yeah, I did actually start a new one called um, documentation because that was on the, in the GitHub. Um, issue list um, that there was that maybe we should have a team called documentation. So these folks have access, right access to the documentation wiki. And um, all I did was add in the people who had already contributed to that repository because not everybody has or feels comfortable yet or is trained to do that. So, so these are the folks who have in the past and so they still have access. Um, but again, you know, uh, whoever wants to join in um, can do so. They just need to ask. Um, One so thing yeah, I think I covered about the documentation is if you don't feel comfortable contributing to it directly, you could email any of these people and have them add it for you. If you want to write something up, that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it kind of this is also a good way for people to see who's doing what and then they can always contact those people directly. Um, so I think I, like, what, uh, what I was gonna say is I think I covered most of the Arctos teams that Dusty suggested and proposed um, and uh, with a few extras, I think. So, you know, um, the only one that we haven't implemented is maybe an Arctos, you know, users or, uh, I'm not sorry, not users, but um, sort of like owners group where we would have one, at least one representative from each institution who can then add in um, their own people like students and, and whatnot, um, or new um, curators. So that's the only thing that hasn't been done yet because, um, yeah, we didn't have an equivalent of that. Um, and then, like I said, uh, these are really um, committees. We also have teams of committees. And so these don't have repositories specifically associated with them, but you can take advantage of, again, more sort of project management tools. And so, you know, you could have um, 
sort of, uh, I, I just sort of like, you know, I, I documented my workflow for WKTs. And then we had some specific meetings um, where we discussed sort of um, higher level uh, geography issues. Um, so that's what this was. It's just, you know, archiving those activities. Um, and now that Arctos is letting us do that, I may actually transform all these committees as sub teams of the Arctos users. So you can actually um, sort of hierarchically nest these. So right now we have these teams that are subcommittees of the Arctos users group that everyone's connected to. And then, so you can see that there's this team that was just for um, uh, presenters um, for at this last Spinach uh, Connected Data workshop. So I don't know, Teresa, if you want to say anything about how that was used or useful for you guys. Yeah, we probably didn't use it as much um, as I probably could have, um, but it did, you know, we also have a project for each one of these where I could sort of keep track of, oh, somebody said they were going to do this, or here's all the ideas we've had for this presentation. Um, mm. And that was helpful. So um, I think we could yeah. probably use those more, but it takes a little time to get them set up and then, um, you know, make sure everybody, it's a good way to communicate because just like with our issues, instead of me sending an email to one of the team members or leaving somebody off an email by accident, um, everybody can see everything we talk about right there. Yeah, that's a great thing that you brought up is communication. So once mm -hmm. you're in a team, you can actually send an email just to all the team members mm -hmm. too. Yeah, so. which I didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, as you can see here, um, we wound up just using issues and um, a project. So, sorry, our can you hear him? Our, my computer yes. just like totally crashed. So now I'm on Carol's. I missed that. So what do you use discussions for? So actually, Michelle, so, if you go to the taxonomy one, you can see how we've been using it. Yeah, I was just going to go back to the, uh, not just the taxonomy, but all the subcommittees use it in this fashion. Mm -hmm. So we'll, we'll look at taxonomy because it's a subcommittee, but you can actually start, a, see how what I just did? I just clicked on the top part here and I'm going to now create a, you know, a title and then I can actually put in a little initiated discussion thread and that's what um, Teresa did for these other ones and basically it's another way of archiving you know a conversation that's just specific to these users I see um, so you yeah. don't have to blast everyone oh oh my god look at this and they have even their own cute icon <laughs> so, um, so yeah, that's anyway cool. so that's, yeah, that's that's yeah, yeah, so that's just one way of using it. And um, like I said, I used the, I did the similar thing with the geography. I didn't need to blast like everyone on the, um, in the user group. Also, it sort of keeps things out of the issue list where it can get buried easily. And these aren't really issues. These are really discussion topics or, you know, figuring out, you know, uh, archiving maybe links. That's how I was using it for the geography. So um, let's say I get hit by a bus um, and somebody else is taking over so they can sort of see like where they don't have to start from scratch. They can see everything that we've discussed here. Um, in fact, um, you know, maybe more than they need to, but yeah. And <laughs> like, you anyway. show, like you showed down at the bottom, you can link these discussions to issues if you're talking about an issue. Yeah. Um, but right. it, and it's a great way to sort of organize like when we're going to have a meeting, what are we going to talk about at the meeting? Um, in a way, I would like to see this replace the Google Docs agendas we have because you could put a list of here's the 10 issues we're going to talk about it. And then you can just click back and forth between this discussion and the issues. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, yeah that's that would a great be idea. Sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, uh, we should probably take more advantage of some of these um, teams and stuff like that. So yeah, I mean, we could also, you know, um, like I said, in the discussion I, uh, or description, I try to make sure it said committee, if that's what it is. Um, but, you know, we could 
we could also be a little bit more organized about that. So this is a little bit of a work in progress. Um, and um, uh, we can um, yeah. easily add teams to this as we as we need to. And um, so yeah, so that's what's going on here with teams. Is there any questions about that? Um, and and we could be also better about like who's kind of like in charge of it. I don't think we there is a way of doing that right now, but we could you know put that in the discussion or something like you yeah. Know, this person right there where it uh, says a committee focused it. on yeah you could put yeah yeah like Michelle, you know Michelle's uh, in charge of this or whoever right yeah complain to her if there's <laughs> issues. <laughs> But you know, and then you know that can rotate or something. But um, but generally, you know, I think we kind of know who's doing what right now. But you know, it might be nice to to add that in um, as we move forward and, and we start bringing in new people. Um, yeah. So those are the main um, issues that I or you know topics I wanted to cover for the um, sort of boot camp aspect of um, GitHub. Um, if there's any other questions, we can uh, address that. But yeah, we spent an hour here. I know how time flies yeah. <laughs> when you're having fun. Um, and then basically, my thought, my thinking is that we could do another one and talk about um, maybe uh, editing and cloning a repo, working offline. Um, especially for those who are really into the um, documentation wiki, um, editors of the documentation wiki, because that might also help speed up things um, um, in terms of editing and creating new pages. I think creating new pages, if you're only using the um, uh, browser, is a little bit of a pain in the butt, I'm guessing. Um, yeah. yeah. I have a, just a very general question. So are we on a, like a, you said we we're on a good account through academic account or something. Is there a limit yep. to the number of repositories or number of people? Are there are limits. Limitless. To we start to have to pay. Limitless. Limitless. Okay. No, we don't have, we don't have to pay. We have an academic account. We, it's limitless. We can make private repos. We can make public repos. Um, okay. Uh, yeah, so I, you know, it was a, it was an easy justification and argument to make with them. So, um, yeah, Michelle, yeah, that's through, that uh, that's through Berkeley's account or how are you doing it through? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I just said like, you know, um, we're almost, I don't know, 80% um, academic institutions. If we so, were a nonprofit they do they have something similar that we could use mm, they have something similar but um so for the nonprofits that i've uh had to manage their github repo for they actually did charge us um i can't remember how much it was it was like seven dollars a month so it wasn't like a lot but it was also kind of a pain to you know uh pay seven dollars a month because you have to set up a credit card etc cetera, etc cetera. so but this is where this is you know we don't need to discuss this here but you know like i said i i, I feel like arctos should be able to take advantage of um our um various associations and so i wouldn't change that if yeah. arctos no, 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 I also just has a nonprofit that deals with its money handling business, right? Because to me, this is the operational side of Arctos, not the business side of Arctos. Yeah. And I'd just like to also say, I support the idea of doing another one of these on the documentation, um, having done some, but I could definitely use a refresher and I think probably other people could too. Yeah, okay, great. So I'll organize that, um, the content for that, and then what we can figure out a time. Um, um, but basically, that would entail installing a few pieces of software on your desktop, and then um, and then we'll play around with cloning and editing files, and then syncing it up to the remote repository. That's basically the workflow. That's when it becomes fun too. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and actually I do all my editing in the web browser. Um, 
which probably I agree is a pain, but it's the only way I know how to do it. So I think it'd be good to uh, know your workflow. Yeah. Okay, great. Well, if there's any other questions, um, send them in through uh, emails or actually you have access to the Google Doc. Just add them into the Google Doc and, and um, we'll um, deal with them there. Thanks, Michelle. Okay, great. Talk to you guys later. Thanks.